do bore di esta pagaliado me name on bore vi a casti a chelo soso you see, I don't, I don't know if that's actually church. This is more of kind of like a showmanship form of entertainment. I, I don't, I, I honestly, I'm not trying to criticize the way a person prays. But is this really praying? Or is it kind of turning it into a joke? Welcome to the Father Leo Show, where I'm dishing out faith, culture, and commentary. In this episode, we're going to jump into it with a conversation about the Holy Spirit, because there's a lot of confusion out there, and the Catholic Church provides a true, authentic understanding of what the Holy, excuse me, of who the Holy Spirit is to us and what the Holy Spirit does in, with, and through us in our life. But before we get into it, please make sure you hit like, subscribe, share and your comments do help us in the algorithm of our podcast. So please make sure you're letting family and friends know about it and leave your comments because we do read them. And oftentimes we'll even uh, be inspired by them as to what we can do for our future episodes. And also please consider joining us in our Patreon community, which gives you great access to some really good formative Catholic material plus gives you some special perks as well. So thanks for supporting us on Patreon. Now let's just jump right into it with a, with a more Catholic perspective on faithfulness and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is certainly unique to the Catholic Church because it is He, the Holy Spirit, is revealed to us in, in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one who, in a sense, sends us the Spirit of God. So in ascension, Jesus goes up to heaven in order to blaze a trail for us so that we can get to heaven as well. But how are we going to get there? Well, we can't climb on our own. The only way we can get to heaven is if God takes us to heaven. And what is that? That's called Pentecost, the sending of the Holy Spirit down to us so that we can be brought to God by the Holy Spirit, which basically means that God is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. We all know this. We sometimes have different names, you know, um, like Holy Ghost. Uh, in, in the Jewish tradition, they do have a concept of God. The Holy Spirit, they call it Ruha HaKodesh, which is the holy breath, the holy breath of God. It is what God breathed into the dirt in the book of Genesis that gave life to Adam. It's what Jesus breathed onto the Holy Spirit before he ascended into heaven. He says, receive the Holy Spirit, and Jesus breathed into them. And then as as far as Muslims is concerned, this is interesting because the Muslims do believe in a Holy Spirit, but they don't actually think it's God. They think that it's just the angel Gabriel, excuse me, not just the angel Gabriel, but an angel, so a separate person from God. So in their concept of God, God is without a concept. They, they, they don't want God to be incarnate, so they won't ever believe that Jesus is God. They don't want the Holy Spirit to be God, so they just basically say that the angel Gabriel is God. But they believe in the one God. Interestingly enough, they kind of treat the prophet Muhammad as a God, which is problematic on a couple different levels. But this isn't a, com a conversation about Muslims or Jews. This is a conversation about God who is the Holy Spirit. And we all know full well that the Holy Spirit appeared to the disciples and the Blessed Mother in the upper room, which is pretty significant because it is there that Jesus Christ consecrated the bread and wine and gave it to us as the eternal and living covenant. And he said, this is my body, this is my blood. So interestingly enough, you'll see the priest put his hands on the bread and wine and say, send your Holy Spirit upon these uh, gifts and make for it, you know, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And so this descending of the Holy Spirit is key. Uh, you know, whenever we take a look at, for example, what the catechism says, it's pretty clear. It's in chapter three. 
It talks about how the Holy Spirit, from a biblical point of view, is manifested with seven particular gifts, and they are wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. Interestingly enough, they are pretty combined into one thing, and that is uh, really an understanding of humility. But then when you look at the scriptures, it talks about how the fruits of the Holy Spirit, um, you know, the church kind of elucidates from scriptures about 12 gifts, and they are charity, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, generosity, gentleness, faithfulness, modesty, self-control, and chastity. These are great gifts to have, but developing a relationship with the Holy Spirit can be challenging. And that's why we have to see that a relationship with the Holy Spirit will make us, in a sense, charismatic, charismatic. And we know that the charismatic movement has been responsible for, you know, uh, really focusing on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, like prophecy, like being slain in the Spirit, like speaking in tongues. We hear the gift of laughter, the gift of tears. So these are all, in a sense, kind of sub-gifts of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the real gift of the Holy Spirit is that you just become holy. That's all it is. So it's an interesting thing about how the Catholic Church understands the Holy Spirit uh, because while we obviously know that it is the Holy Spirit is God, we don't actually focus a lot on the Holy Spirit in the liturgy. Uh, in the old rite, there used to be a lot more references to the Holy Spirit than the Novus Ordo. And trust me, folks, relax. I'm not saying that the Tridentine Mass is better and the Novus Ordo is better. I'm not saying the Novus Ordo is, or Ordo is um, uh, uh, you know, not as holy. But I'm just saying that in the Tridentine, there were a lot more references to the Holy Spirit. The Greek Orthodox Church, uh, their sacred liturgy, they have a lot of references to the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and so... You can see how there's a certain emphasis, even within the Catholic Church, the Tridentine will, the Tridentine, uh, the Latin Mass it is, you know, kind of known as, but you can still do the Latin Mass in the new form, it's just in Latin. But in the Tridentine Latin Mass, there's a lot more references and even kind of gestures of the Holy Spirit. They'll even take the chasuble and kind of wave it as if it's kind of like being filled with the Holy Spirit so that there's more gestures. But in the Tridentine Mass, they wouldn't take the Charismatics too well at all. Nope. They'd call them Crazymatics, unfortunately. So you can see that there's a lot of, you know, what do we as Catholics who just want to live a very balanced, holy life, how are we to understand that? Well, you'll hear about that in my commentary. But before we jump into it, let me just do a little summary, first of all. In order for you to have an authentic relationship with the Holy Spirit, you have to have an authentic relationship with the Blessed Mother because she is considered the spouse of the Holy Spirit. She gives flesh to the Spirit in the incarnation, bringing Jesus into this world through her yes. And then also you have to live the virtues of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to give you some more of that in the commentary. But I just wanted to get you some insight into the challenges of an authentic relationship with the Holy Spirit. You know, again, we have very traditional people who pray using references to the Holy Spirit, but you don't necessarily see them as free and joyful as, say, like a charismatic would. But then you'll have people in the Novus Ordo, the, the new Mass, as most parishes celebrate now, with the priest facing the people, three readings, um, you know, at Mass, homily, and then the Liturgy of the Eucharist. So all of that is, is fine, but there's not a lot of reference to the Holy Spirit other than, for example, the Epiclesis. Um, and, you know, maybe some some other references at various liturgies like Pentecost. And while it may be challenging for many Christians, at least we have a Catholic theology and not like what we see in the world.
So let me just offer some commentary on how the world and other churches see the Holy Spirit. I personally find other churches kind of frustrating, to be honest with you, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, because they almost have a silly point of view. I'm going to give you an example of this. This is um, Benny Hinn, famous Pentecostalist, and here's an image of him because he just is this conduit of the Holy Spirit is able to kind of slay people in the Holy Spirit, including a whole entire choir behind him. Check this out. And face me here. The Lord is going to use you. Jesus is going to use you. You want that? Lift your hands and ask him. Use him, Lord. It's your turn, choir, I told you. You want this anointing? Join hands. What happened to the little boy? God wants to touch you too. Lift your hands to heaven. Touch the squire, Lord. Touch! All right, you know what? I can only handle so much of that kind of nonsense. And, and I, I have to say, this is showmanship. This is nonsense. The sad part is there's a lot of people who are convinced that this man, you know, he's not a terrible person. As a matter of fact, he said some very positive things about Catholicism and our understanding of the Eucharist as he matured. But in his early years, he was a pure showman. I mean, this is just kind of silly. And I honestly think it's a taking advantage of the mystery of the Holy Spirit to the point where you know, he says that he has these gifts to just slay people in the spirit. You know, in the Catholic tradition, we believe in that. People can be slain in the Holy Spirit. And I have experienced some of this myself. Uh, it's an overwhelming feeling of peace. So I am, in a sense, a charismatic priest. Um, I believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But this is just true showmanship and it becomes more of a form of entertainment than a real and again i'm not judging the people who believe him i'm just saying that this is not what we as catholics believe being slain in the spirit while we believe in it it is not necessary in our faith you don't have to be slain in the spirit you know to be prayed over and if you feel this overwhelming sense of peace and you just want to rest in the spirit that's one thing but you don't need it in order to be holy so this is why why i i know that benny hinn is not a terrible man even though he's a showman and he's made a lot of money off of being a manifester of the holy spirit but this is why you can't trust televangelists especially when it comes to a teaching on the Holy Spirit. Reflect back. Are there any regrets that you have? Absolutely. I'm a human being. I've made mistakes. We all make mistakes. I was not too wise a number of times with prophecy. There were times when I thought God had showed me something that he wasn't showing me. And I spoke it out. Sadly, uh, there were some prophecies I gave that were not accurate or from the Lord. I'll give you a little piece of news that I felt in my soul yesterday. Someone will come up for a cure for that coronavirus. Guaranteed. I know about the Holy also. Relax. He'll probably kill about 5,000 people. That's what I felt from the Lord. It kind of, you know, timber down. It'll be all done. When it hits 5,000, it'll change. See, that's the kind of silliness. And, and, and I do call it silly when people say, you know what, I've, I've received a, a message from the Lord. This is kind of like the prophecy that Holy Spirit gives to us. Well, prophecy isn't like fortune telling. Prophecy isn't, isn't about 
being able to, um, prophecy isn't about being able to tell the future. Prophecy is really about understanding an ability to discern what God might be calling of you. Uh, and so this understanding of prophecy is really not about being able to speak in tongues and being slain in the spirit. It, it's about knowing the direction that a person is going and giving them the grace to tell them if you continue in this path, that's ultimately where you're going to you know, end up. You know, if you're heading south in so many ways, like south spiritually, you're going to end up in a certain place and there's no return. So this is the kind of frustration that I have when it comes to, um, just when it comes to people speaking in tongues as thinking that that is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, do Catholics very good Catholic friends of mine, I know, speak in tongues. And there have been times when even I just feel like don't know what I'm saying, but I have a desire to just kind of verbalize something. St. Paul talks about it within kind of like the context of groaning and sighs. We, we do this, and it's just a, at a point where you're just very empty and you just want to ah, say something and you don't know exactly how to say it. And that can be a form of speaking in tongues. Again, this is all about a mystery, but I can guarantee you, this is not speaking in tongues. Now, when you get up here, there'll be a message from the Lord. You'll need to stand on one of these steps. I don't know why that is, but stand on one of these steps. When you get up here, there'll be a message from the Lord on your heart. And I want you to deliver it to the becoming. No, 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 on these steps. No, that ain't enough. Yeah, that, that's good right there. Praise the Lord. Rise up this day and be filled afresh with the new wine of the Holy Ghost. Rise up this day and oh, sepala manama erepe eribo ahaha. Oh, koridi esta pahaha. Oh, refia daha. Oh, repasianama. To drink, 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 to drink. Oh, Sikaya, we drink parumbo, mendebre, vediva, ambrosto, cora della brevibia. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're not worried what other people think. No, uh -huh. doesn't matter what they think. <laughs> oh, do boridi esta pagaliado. Oh, le bevedi a basso d'opre. In a man bad no mbo golo bon chamber. My name on bo rivia casti a cello soso. Oh my gosh. You see, I don't I don't know if that's actually church. This is more of kind of like a showmanship form of entertainment. I I don't I, I honestly I'm not trying to criticize the way a person prays. But is this really praying or is it kind of turning it into a joke? Speaking in tongues is a form of joke. We know that the disciples spoke in languages, but guess what? Other people understood them. You know, I mean, it's not like this mysterious language that nobody understands. And they say, well, but that's where the Holy Spirit gives people the gifts of prophecy. You know, someone could be saying things like that and I can understand them. Oh, no, you can't, because it's not a real language. You see, when we talk about speaking in tongues, it's not about just making jibber jabber and making fun of it and turning it into like a fake conversation as if you're speaking in another language, because I guarantee you, Kenneth Copeland, he is a, he is, he is criminal in how he approaches church and his finances. That's just all there is to it. And you cannot be truly inspired by the Holy Spirit if you are like this man. Now, are people going to just send shade my way because they say, how dare you judge him? Well, it's because of how he lives his life. It does not seem and it does not reveal the holiness of the Holy Spirit, the same holiness that the disciples experienced. 
And I think what's even worse is that when you kind of get to this form of of silliness when it comes to the Holy Spirit, which is how the world views things in the Protestant world in particular, if they have no structure, then they go off in these tangents and like that one man becomes like what he says is 100% true, whether it be Kenneth Copeland, whether it be Benny Hinn, you know, these are huge televangelists that they built ministries around their personalities. But at least they will talk about the Bible in some theological way. But it's farther and farther from the original church's teachings. And when you get to that level, then you get to pure evil like this. We're grateful that you're here with us. Do either of you have any questions for Ms. Pentecost? I like your eye shadow. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you like her eye shadow. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, maybe she'll let you borrow it. When you're older, when you're allowed to wear makeup. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. Well, one of the things I think is great about Miss Pentecost is she reminds us that we, we follow a God who calls us to not conform to things of this world, uh, that we're supposed to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. And that means that what I think today may have to change tomorrow if I continue to renew my mind. And it's so cool that we serve a God that calls us to continue to grow and continue to, to change into something new. Uh, and to not be bound by the ways that the world confines us sometimes, that, that we're supposed to live differently. Uh, so I'm so thankful that you're here with us. As am I. Yeah. All right, let's pray. God, we give you thanks uh, that you have sent us Miss Pentecost. And you have okay, I've seen enough of that. Uh, that is a, an ordained Methodist preacher, Miss Pentecost. And... Uh, I'm glad that they blocked out the children's faces, but shame on the parents for bringing them to a church like this. This is not a church. What's, what's interesting is I look at this, they have like this side table that they guess would they call it as an altar. And they even have um, some vessels of some sort, probably with Holy Communion. They have it covered up like a pall. And of course, then you have a, a priest wearing pink and purple because those are somehow, it, I don't know if this is Leitare Sunday or Gaudete Sunday, but I think it was just in honor of kind of promoting a, a lifestyle that it is not of God. That's all there is to it. I mean, that person who is dressed in drag is an ordained minister for the Methodist Church. And the name that they use is Miss Pentecost. It's a, it's a direct it's a direct attack on the holiness of Pentecost. And and that's the, the the problem that I have if you don't have sound orthodox catholic teaching, if you don't have a catechism, if you don't have liturgy and ritual, then you kind of go off on these strange weird experiences of the Holy Spirit. And so let me offer you my commentary so that we can have what I'm going to call a more authentic lived relationship of the Holy Spirit. So Pentecost is upon us and we call it technically the birthday of the church because uh, it's the time when the, when the good Lord gives to us not only his son, but his son sends forth the Holy Spirit. Now, the big debate between Catholics, Roman Catholics, and Eastern Orthodox is one word called filioque, and the word que means and. And it comes at the point of the creed where we talk about how um, the Holy Spirit comes from the Father and the Son. Filio is Son and. So it's Father and the Son. And the Holy Spirit can go whenever the Holy Spirit wants to go didn't need Jesus' permission because the Holy Spirit is also God. But in that humility, Jesus could have also just said, you know what, Father, I'm not going to carry the cross and I'm still going to save people. But the Father's will was that he would show the world how much he loves them by giving us his only son. And that in his death, Jesus shows the kind of Father's love for us. When Jesus sent the Holy Spirit from the Father and the Son, 
it is only because the Holy Spirit is also humble to the Father and the Son as Jesus is humble to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is humble to the Father. There's a real humility. And I think that's the key to understanding the Holy Spirit. To know that we are physical beings, but we are also spiritual beings. And so when people say things like, I'm spiritual, but not religious. Oh, really? Which spirit? Is it the spirit of Benny Hinn or Kenneth Copeland or Miss Pentecost? These are not good spirits. And we've got to be careful because if we fall into this mentality that I'm spiritual, but not religious, we got to remember that the devil is spiritual too. So make sure that if it is truly an invitation to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, that it's going to be, uh, it is going to be uh, motivated by the spirit of humility, that spirit of humility. When you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you're not going to show off and start preaching in tongues or, you know, you're not going to be like, well, uh, I've got a prophecy for you. You know, you're annoying. You don't have a prophecy for me. You can pray for me. Or if you think like, hey, you know what? I could just feel like, I don't know, I, God put it in my heart to just say something to you, then just say it like that. But if you want to come across as like some prophet because it's going to make you feel holy, then I would get back in touch with the spirit of humility first. Because in that humility, that's where we truly experience the holiness. And that word holiness is something that we've got to take into account when we talk about the spirit. Because holiness comes from the idea of being separated from and reserved for God, separated from evil and sin and reserved for God. So if you're not going to confession, then you're not going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's just all there is to it. That humility is going to lead you to the holiness. That holiness is going to lead you to confession. And that confession is going to lead you to the Eucharist. That's kind of like the methodology here, to be able to fall more deeply in love with Holy Communion. And then once you receive that Holy Communion, you're going to become truly incarnate of God. You're going to incarnate God inside of you. You know, you are what you eat is what we say oftentimes. And if you are what you eat, then you're going to go and do the things that Jesus did. We're talking about the corporal works of mercy as well as the spiritual works of mercy. But as I mentioned at the very beginning of the show, you're also going to have a deeper relationship with the Blessed Mother because the Blessed Mother is going to teach you how to say yes to the Spirit's will and also kind of make the Holy Spirit dwell within you as Mary was the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we are called to be as well. So if you really want an authentic relationship with the Holy Spirit, start off with humility, get to confession, frequent the sacrament of communion, you know, Sundays and holy days, and then start doing the work of the Holy Spirit, corporal and spiritual works of mercy. But Outside of that, make sure you're also living an inspired life, in spiritus. Make sure you're living an enthusiastic life, en theos. And make sure that if you truly have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's going to give you the strength to persevere and to continue even when times get difficult. And because the Holy Spirit is also a spirit of joy, we're going to understand what it means to live the good news. You're not going to look miserable. You're going to look like you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You're going to radiate joy. You're going to radiate compassion and sadness when it is appropriate. But even in that, you're going to be an inspiration of hope. So how you live is really the determining factor of whether or not you have a relationship with God. Not by these manifested gifts of being slain in the Spirit and, and, and you know, talking in tongues and prophesying, that's really something a little bit more, how shall I say, uh, more in need of spiritual direction. And then, other than that, live a holy life. I wish you all a very happy Pentecost. Happy birthday to the church. This is when, again, God gives to us the great gifts and more importantly, gives to us the way up to heaven. As Jesus went up in ascension, we can follow, but we kind of can't without his help. That's why he sent us the Holy Spirit to bring us there, which is where we all want to go. 
So thank you for listening. I hope that this was helpful to you. Please make sure you like, subscribe, share, and comment. What are the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you want? What are the gifts that you want the Holy Spirit to give you? And also make sure you can be a gift to us by being a member of Patreon, where with your support, we can continue to dish out faith, culture, and commentary. God bless you and stay hungry for God.